get a historical perspective on the Perfect 10 organization. Today we have with us Mayor Kamal Johnson of the city of Hudson. Welcome, Kamal. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so glad to have you give your perspective uh, here. Um, in your platform, when you were running for mayor, uh, you one of your platforms was to, one of your initiatives was to provide help to the city's youth from cradle to career. And Perfect 10 kind of fits right into that agenda, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I'm just happy that Perfect 10 has been around for so long. And, um, you know, to just see some of the young women that have been here since the beginning that are now adults and taking on careers, it's just like an amazing feeling seeing that, you know, I've watched this grow since day one. Well, yeah, let's talk about that because you originally were doing an after school program and this sort of came out of that. Uh, you were working with Paula Foreman or you, uh, why don't you tell that story? Yeah, Go yeah. Ahead. So um, I was the site coordinator at the Blue Hawk Nation after school program and um, about 10 years ago, uh, in walks this really fancy woman who's like, <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I wanna work with inner city youth in particular. Um, young ladies and you know I want to give them and show them different experiences and women in power and um, at first you know a lot of people kind of looked at it like there's no way she's going to connect with, with these kids like it's just she came from advertising I mean, yeah she came from like major <laughs> yeah so she like had her plan like already laid out um, and um, you know a lot of people really didn't see the vision but i kind of saw the vision and i was like i told her like you know let's give it a shot and um you know 10 years later here we are and even you know to the point where i um when things started to pick up i said to her i said this is gonna work and you know years from now my daughter is gonna be a part of this program and she was just like well you know let's <laughs> take it a day at a time <laughs> And your daughter is a part of the program. Yes, and yeah, my Asia. daughter yeah. Asia is a part of the program, and you know she's a big fan of the program. And just see that you know um, how much it's grown to the point where you know they were in one little classroom doing different activities to now they're all over the county, um, you know, horseback riding and so many other efforts that they're doing to the point where they also have girls who started from the beginning that have careers are in college now. Yeah. So it's, um, it's humbling, it's amazing. After, I mean, as you said, this is the 10th anniversary, and to be able to watch uh, a girl from start, uh, which is fourth and fifth grade, yeah. to going on beyond high school is mm -hmm. pretty amazing to see the impact that a program like this makes on somebody. Yeah. Um, and also, what kind of impact does this kind of program make on the city? I mean, there's no political agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not for financial gain at all. That's yeah. why we're doing a fundraiser, you know, to, to get more money, because mm -hmm. it costs a lot of money for an organization like this to run. How does that help you in the wide scheme of your plans for the city of Hudson? Yeah, I think um, Perfect 10 filled a gap that there wasn't any programming that just centered around um, young girls. And not only just like as in like, a place a safe space for them to talk but a place for them to have experiences that um, are outside of their norm so um, this was like huge and that's why it continues to gain momentum because there's no other program like it it stands on its own and um, you know I'm just happy to have it a part of our community and to be a part of supporting it in any way. Right, and also the interaction with businesses and local mm -hmm. artists, it yeah. really does sort of draw everybody in together. And again, there's nothing political, it's not aligned with any message or anything, it's set for just to give girls a great experience yeah. and help them be the best they can be. Yeah. Um, so your daughter, Asia, uh, what are some of her favorite things to do in Perfect 10? Uh, she loves the horseback riding. Oh, don't she they all? She loves uh, Glee. Um, you know, there's so many different um, activities. And also, it's a place where she can gather with her friends and, um, you know, they have time just to do their homework and just to catch up and be kids. Um, right, yeah. And that's a lot of what's missing too because everything is so structured that um, the kids just sometimes need a moment just to be kids and amongst each other to enjoy each other. Right, yeah. Also, now, during this time of COVID, it's particularly challenging mm -hmm. for these kids to find places that they are allowed to go and play and be together and everything. And Perfect 10, of course, is taking, you know, all the precautions and everything and being very, you know, socially conscious of what they need to do. But it still gives them 
uh, continuity in their lives that they had pre-COVID. Yeah. And it's, I think it's extremely important. And as you said, the after-school homework help, mm -hmm. that takes a lot of heat off the parents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <know? laughs> as, as a parent and, you know, a working parent as well, like I understand the complexities of trying to make time for virtual learning, making sure everything's set up right and there's connection and then following through. And, you know, schoolwork has changed so much yeah. since I was in school that, um, you know, sometimes it's tough to grasp. Like I remember helping Asia with homework, with math homework, and I'm giving her the right answer, but that's not the right way, way to, to get to, to it. do oh, it anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> it's good to have programs like this that, you know, keep up with, um, you know, the changing standard, changing times. Right. And also Perfect 10 is also always looking for um, other ways to help the girls. As you mentioned, there are some, you know, tried and true mm -hmm. uh, activities, the horseback riding, they do pottery, they are learning how to make jewelry. Uh, they are going to different art studios and learning how mm -hmm. to do particular kind of things, like better pottery, they have a kiln and all that. But there's also talk about other programs, um, like maybe helping provide therapy yeah. for some kids who need that, which, wow, what a benefit that would be. Yeah. I mean, me and Paula talked about that a lot as the program has grown, um, heavy on you know meeting the socio-emotional needs of our youth, um, and I think you know dealing with uh, girls who come from diverse backgrounds, lower socioeconomic backgrounds, there's sometimes there's a lot you know that they take in and they're forced to um, be stronger, and there's no outlet for right. them to express right. that feeling, and um, you know programs that can give them that outlet that don't stigmatize, um, you know, any type of mental illness or depression and things like that is always a plus on, you know, just helping a person grow. Yeah. Again, all of these activities need money. That's mm -hmm. why we're here today. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to let you give the final word here, Kamal, yeah. and the, the plea for this is why you should support this organization. Yeah, this is definitely why you should support this organization. Um, you know, it's vital for our community, and um, it's taken a lot of load off of parents in our community. And, you know, it, they say it takes a village. This is part of so that true. village yep. stepping in and helping out. So, um, you know, do what you can, donate what you can, and let's, you know, keep Perfect 10 going for 10 more years. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Kamal. Thank you.